This podcast is brought to you by JAM, Junction Arts and Media, building community in the Upper Valley through media. And we're here. Hello. Screaming in the darkness. We've been rolling dead air. Screaming in the darkness. We've been rolling de- We've been rolling dead air. You don't need to use those if you don't want, Dave, but you look okay. nice with those headphones on. Thank you. We've been uh we've we've been rolling dead air for over an hour. That's our intro. Yeah. We just do dead air, solid out. We don't want this edited out if you're listening. The next show we'll cut it down to half an hour. Yeah. Screaming in the darkness, and that's we set the tone with that's the darkness. An hour of dead silence. I want people to listen to it, just be riveted, you know? You're driving, you're you're um you're running. You're this is a- real silence. Yeah. This is just silence. You can't even you don't even get that anymore. Just a break from everything. It's constant, you know. Yeah, I need a break from everything. Right? I this is the the theme of the of the day is Everything is going so fast. Watch this. Go here. Click on these TikTok videos. And there's just no break. It's like you're running late all the time. Yeah, you're always running late. You're always rushing for your life. And there's that, there's that, uh, God, with that famous joke, you know, if you, and if you don't like what you do, you're, you're constantly rushing and you're late to your, to something you hate. Scratch that. Hey, we're going to live edit the show. Okay. We, there's an amazing editor. Jam is the coolest thing that I know of. We have an amazing editor that works on this. It's the only way we could ever, ever make a podcast is to have most of everything what we, we, that we say to be cut deleted, out cut out and deleted. Yeah, I think they don't cut out enough. That's. I think they should cut us out and leave the first hour of dead silence. We might have two hours of dead silence. Let's just... <laughs> <laughs> we have just about 10 minutes before we got to go. We got to pick up Dave's grandson... Artem, Artem from uh, from from nursery school, preschool. Yeah, he's leading the class astray. <laughs> and yeah, the, the 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 theme does seem to be every we're all rushing. Everyone's rushing. I, I you know I have dinner with Dartmouth students every Friday. Dartmouth students uh, cook dinner at this community meal, and so I start talking to these students, and they all say, "I'm so stressed. There's so always so much to do." There's never a break. The teacher, I got my timer set. They, they have 10, 10 week terms, so you they have to s- study like crazy. They just yeah, we take we take our best and brightest, and we just we just force so much upon them until they are they're they're all on they all are diagnosed with high anxiety, you know ADHD whatever. Everyone has ADHD right now. I love that term. It's competitive, and these kids are like the best competitors in the country. So they don't—they're yeah. not going to not compete with each other. Yeah, let's get the, let's get really smart kids, and then let's have them compete and go, go, go. But when I pull them to a side, I say, "Hey, how are you doing?" They're like, "I'm stressed out of my mind. I'm addicted to my phone. I'm addicted to doing." But there's no breaks. In the in yep. in the in the, in the student from Athens, Greece, this girl from Athens, Greece, she says, "When I'm in Greece, I go to the cafe for five hours with my friends." We just hang out. We just put our feet up. We take it easy. We have a wonderful time. She goes, in America, I never do that. No one spends five hours. In the- they, go to, they go to the coffee place. They get a coffee, and then they're walking while they drink the coffee. And now they don't even walk at Dartmouth. They have scooters. Now, walking is too slow for college students now. They all, half of them are driving around motorized scooters. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because you just need to get everywhere quicker and faster. And they think they're pedestrians when they're on the crosswalks. They go zooming across the crosswalks like they're pedestrians. Oh, I, I'm allowed to go here. I think we're watching the downfall of civilization, Dave. Let's, th- we somehow think you have all this money, Dartmouth College, you know, we got, we got billions of dollars. Billions and billions. We got students from around the world and everyone has anxiety and everyone is stressed out. And why don't we just chill out and take it easy? We need a place like Shantytown where people could go sit around a bonfire and just groove. Yeah, we have a place like Shantytown. Oh, yeah, that's right. Dave's famous homestead and peace sanctuary and uh, place of worship, Shantytown. Yeah, baptismal. He's baptismal. Got you, it all. It's got it all. He houses, you know, AT hikers, homeless students, professors. Worms. Worms. We got uh, it all. You name it, 
they got you, you're absolutely right we need that place that is a sanctuary a sanctuary to like yo put your phone away and decompress even the way these students eat dave i have been yeah. with these dartmouth students you wouldn't believe how fast they eat dinner mm. <laughs> the best and brightest they eat their dinner boom done let's go see you later thanks for coming yeah. everything is fast how did i not get that <laughs> I went before the fast group. <laughs> we did it slower. We need it's 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 easy to get caught up in the fast speed. See, I think I think it's become normal. The 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 success driven society and culture, the do more, has become normal. Where if you actually slow down, you feel act you feel crazy for a while. I mean, five years ago, I moved. I I cut all my bills. I moved in with my mom. I got rid of everything and I, and I'm like, I am, I'm just not, I'm going to slow way down. And for the first two years, I felt like a total loser. I go, I don't have any money. I'm broke. I live with my mom. I don't have a car. I can't buy anything. I can't go anywhere. So what changed? <laughs> What's changed is I suddenly realized, you know, I was telling, what, what changed was I was telling a friend about this and they go, you're living the dream. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> you can just go for long walks and lay naked in the sun and have long conversations with your friends. Yeah, I, you've got it made. And I didn't realize that. And then I go, wow, I do have it made. I can just make art and just take it really easy and have a simple, simple life. Make art, don't slow way down. And yeah. and now, now I just got approved for food stamps. Here's the great thing about having no money. Best thing about ever having no money, when you, when you have no money for a long time, when you get money, you spend it. No, it's like the greatest thing. When you get a little bit of money, like yeah. I get approved for food stamps. Food stamps is a couple hundred dollars a month that you right. can use at a grocery store. Yeah. People think like, oh, the, it's you're, like, oh, oh, oh you're, you're, you're rich. You're rich. They, they approve and they go, you got, you got three hundred dollars food stamps. I was like, mom, I started dancing in my house yeah. yesterday. I'm literally dancing, screaming over three hundred dollars. Yeah. Because I'm like, this is incredible. I can go to the grocery store. And it's like I won the Powerball. It's like everyone's. My baseline is zero. Right. You know, my entire net worth is a tin of change I keep in my mom's car. That's all the money that I have. Right. So when I get 300 bucks. Yes. Big it, deal. It is a huge deal. I go to the grocery store. I buy things I would never buy when I was making money. Huh. You know, it's like when you, when, you, when, some, when you get food stamps from the government, when you get a couple hundred dollars to spend on food, you buy you you buy the essentials, but you also get something that you you would I would never buy a five dollar organic coconut water in my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I when, hope I never do. <laughs> but when the government's paying for it, those guys, I'm like, I'll get that and the expensive cheese. Don't get me on this government. Okay, Dave, we got we got a couple. We you know we're down to you know four mm -hmm. minutes. Let's check in with David Vincelette. Let's give the people an update on the whistleblower, the revolutionary, the man who fights environmental pollution. He's responsible for whistleblowing the asphalt that Dartmouth College and Hanover were putting into the brook. He cleaned that brook. He gets them to stop dumping asphalt into the brook. And, um, and he's a hero. And uh, there's always a number of battles that he's fighting. What is the current state of uh, affairs, Dave? Well, the VA said I should quit fighting. Talk to my therapist. I hadn't talked to her for months. She said, maybe it's time, Dave. You got him to stop the program. You're just beating, your, beating yourself up. I said, yeah, but I have this legal agreement with the, the government that I'm, it's my duty to stop the violation of the Constitution. So what do I do, just forget about that? She said, well, you've done the best one person can do. I said, yeah, but that doesn't absolve me of my responsibility. Anyway, You're no, yeah, that's what she was saying, and I. Your therapist told you to quit. Yeah, yeah, she said just stop, just stop fighting. Stop, and, just stop and fighting. What do you think about that advice? Well, it would be, it would just be too tough. Like I say, I the fact that twelve people went through what we all went through, and and the government gets to walk away, never even apologize for polluting them, and then putting them in a cage just rubs me the wrong way. I just can't. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't. Now, for the viewers at home. The, the town of Hanover did put a f giant fence around Dave's property and they, they put it over his driveway and over his fire lane. They, you know, they caged him off like an animal. Yeah. Because they wanted to say, you know, stay Which over I there am. and don't start, don't, 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 don't come on our property because some of Dave's belongings 
worst wood w- recycled wood wood recycled wood would go on town property you know they, they they made a law at the dump that you can't take stuff because of david vincelet david vincelet was taking so much stuff home from the dump that there's now a sign i was winning he was winning there's now a sign that you cannot no scavenging because not only was he taking stuff from the dump he was taking things into the woods and stockpiling them so he could come back with bigger, you know, you know, and over time take all of these belongings. You were the best boards, th- the best thing, yeah, for that dump. And they they were charging people to get rid of the stuff. Then I was taking it away for free, so they had room to dump more, take money to dump more stuff. I was just taking things that I could use as much as I. What some of the what, what are some of the greatest things you've taken from the dump? Oh, I've gotten tools and antique tools, all kinds of things. But mostly boards and beams and windows and doors and things that came off of old antique houses that they didn't have time to salvage. So I would show up at the dump and pick through the, when they were tearing down old houses and get all the, as much of the stuff as I could and just stockpile it. Thinking that I had several houses to build because I am a carpenter. I thought, well, I'll stockpile this stuff. And when I was time to build my little girls a house, I'll have all the materials. That's how I built my house is stockpiling used materials and building it into a house. Dave built an incredible house. That's one of the most amazing houses I've ever seen. He he has giant, huge windows that are like half the half of his house and look over into a forest over a brook. Where did you get those giant windows, Dave? One I got out of a building just as they just as they were about to smash it. We went in with sledgehammers and nail pulling tools mm. and yanked it out just before a bulldozer came. He said, "You have five minutes," and we got it out of there, put it in my truck, and took it home and it's been there ever since for the last 38 that's years. That's amazing. Yeah. You've been staring through that window at the brook for 38 years. Yeah, it's just you fantastic. Sa- you saved it from getting smashed. And then the win- the middle section was two giant sliding doors. I'd never seen anything like them. They were at a garage sale for $20. And we built built the place to put them in. And it really is spectacular the way, but it isn't the house, it's the view that's just yeah. amazing. You have the most spectacular view I've ever witnessed. Yeah. The thing with that dump that's great is you can, you know, you bring your truck in full of stuff. You know, they weigh your truck to see how much you owe them, how much you need to pay them. So then I, I you know, I pay them and I dump all the trash and then I fill up the truck with as much supplies as I can. So then when I leave and they weigh the truck again. They weigh it again? They weigh it on the way out. That's how they know how much you owe them. Right. Oh, I thought you waited twice and then did this. Okay. No, yeah, they wait. So, so you're getting paid to take some stuff. They weigh you. They, they weigh you in, and then you come out, and they go, "How, how come your truck weighs more?" <laughs> yeah, I used to have that. <laughs> I used to have that problem. Yeah, I used to. I used to stop and get all get all the wood ready. I'd pile it all up, get it all set, and then I'd drive in and load it up in about five minutes, and then they'd come back out and they'd say, "How do you do? How do you come out so quick? How, how come you're way more?" <laughs> that's why they stopped the. That's why they stopped it. I figured out my system. It was yeah. just common sense. Yeah. They'd rather watch the stuff rot. It's just it's just kind of sad because that they, they don't set up some kind of program to winnow out as much of the usable recycled wood as possible. Yeah. But they yeah. just they just don't have time for it. I go there. I can't afford. I love to paint. I can't afford to buy canvases. So I go there and I just find pieces of wood. Yeah, that's so cool. Fill my car up and so I can paint that. And they haven't been giving you a hard time. No. Oh, that's nice. I do it real quick. You know, I'm like fast as I can. It's hilarious. I feel like I'm robbing a bank because I'm taking this wood and scraps of wood in a giant pile at the dump. (laughs) That's why I used to love Sunday afternoons. The dump was closed, but I'd be in there sorting out the stuff all by myself. I had to run of the show. (laughs) You literally would break into the dump. I to take other people's trash. Actually, I didn't break <laughs> in. I walked in. There was a, a way to walk in without breaking anything or crossing any fences. So I, He snuck through I the was, woods. I snuck through the woods <laughs> <laughs> to the treasure place. That must, have been, that must have been the highlight of your life. I'm sneaking in the woods into the dump. Is it daytime or nighttime? Are you wearing Day, like are daytime? You, are you, yeah, you're using your skills you learned from being in the Tenth Mountain Division Army. Yeah. It's very sleuthful, <laughs> very quiet. <laughs> but it was great. There's like this huge wasteland, and nobody there but me. That's the title of your next book, the vast wasteland. And there's a huge wasteland. There's it's no been, one there but it's, me. It's been done. 
All right, Dave. It's five. Okay. It's it's uh it's uh almost two fifty. Do we have? Well, let's close up with any closing closing thoughts or words for the for the for the people at home. Keep kicking butt wherever you are. Keep yeah. Do, doing what's right. Tell the truth. Be good. Yeah. Love God. Serve your brother. Be happy. Laugh. Yeah. yeah that too. <laughs> All right. We love you. Ciao. Love you, Chico. Love you. Uh, uh, um. Love you, the whole jam crew. Everyone. The whole jam crew. You're amazing. You're awesome. And, and uh, it's a real pleasure to even have you guys in our lives. All right. Bye. Thank you for listening to this jam podcast. If you have found this program interesting and would like to find more Upper Valley content or learn how to produce your own media, please visit us at uvjam.org.